What's up guys, welcome back to Wrench Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at Tesla stock, ticker symbol TSLA, on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day. Tuesday, February 27th. Well, big day here for Tesla stock. First of all, it's up $7.43 a share, 3.87%. That's not a huge day by volatility standards as far as Tesla is concerned, but it's a big day as we come into 200 bucks a share. Let's take a look at this thing and get really contextual, try to unpack all the bias we possibly can out of the market today, starting here with the one minute chart. First of all, I cover Tesla stock, you know, the exact same way I'm doing right now every single day, five videos a week. If you'd like to get notified every time I do so, please subscribe to the channel. And let's jump in here. Again, starting here on the one minute chart, first of all, the stock is down a little bit after hours, less than a point per share. Just understand, as you'll oftentimes hear me say in these videos. See that? If you're watching on a phone, I, I bet you're struggling to even see what I'm looking at here. See those volume candles in the after hours? They're so incredibly low. Stocks are really easy to push around after hours. So please, take after hours movement with a grain of salt, whether it's in your favor or going against your sentiment. The only exception to that, at least for me, is if there's a major catalyst that pushes a lot of volume in the after hours that is equivalent to regular trading hours volume um, and that, that's typically going to be like a news catalyst or earnings. Of course, most of the time, volume is going to be really low after hours, so take it with a grain of salt. Now, let's just briefly take a look at Tesla as far as trying to generate intraday scalping revenue around what would be a core position, right? I think it's important to attempt to do that. Um, you know, if you have the time and the ability to give your attention to Tesla for even, you know, a few minutes a day, an hour a day, I think it's important to take a look at a variety of stocks and try to try to do that if you want to be a more active trader, which you guys know, I'm a scalper at heart. Scalp trading is what I do every single day. But it's important to understand that 99% of the market each day is random. There's no edge, right? There's no positive expected value. In fact, it's either flat or negative expected value. That's a waste of our time. I don't want to be spending any time trading anything that doesn't have edge. And the truth is, when a stock is not specifically in play, which requires really elevated relative volume, probably a fresh big news catalyst, a lot of eyeballs, more than normal to a substantial degree. And the truth is, 99% of the time, any stock is not going to be in that, in that seat. Right, Tesla is not no exception. You know, no stock is an exception. So the truth is, if you're looking at these little wiggles here intraday, and you're like, "Well, I'm just going to trade these these EMA wiggles on Tesla," sometimes it'll work. But the truth is, I've found, and most other traders have found, at least that are successful in the longer term, that there there isn't substantial edge, if any, in trading these little wiggles on big blue chips when they're not specifically in play, which again is not a dig on Tesla at all. It's just the way, the way it is for all stocks most days. A setup that does have edge that I have forward tested for years in a variety of market conditions is a stock that I call the repeat offender. And you look here, and Tesla's a stock I'm watching for this every day. I'm always looking for little psychological bounce and rejection setups off the plus or minus two standard deviation range off the volume weighted average price. It's Nothing more than a psychological subconscious range. When you start pulling away too far, I found two standard deviations to be the sweet spot as far as setup quality and quantity is concerned. And Tesla, I'm watching a lot. The, unfortunately here, we didn't really get a true, I typically like to take the third and or fourth bounce slash rejection, depending on which side of the volume weighted average price we're on, right? And Tesla is a stock that I'll trade this setup on often. Uh, t so just the reason I bring that up is because that's what I'm watching tomorrow as we head into uh, the day for intraday opportunity. Today, you can see it was a little sloppy. We never really got up there for a third or fourth bounce. We bounced early the channel between the uh, two standard deviation band and the uh, 20 EMA, which is that purple line. It gets a little tight. That throws off the edge as well. These are just things that I'm thinking about um, for intraday revenue generating opportunity. Let's move on now away from the intraday mentality and take a look at the five minute chart and start start kind of uh, going through our paces here of bias, trying to pull bias out of the market and take a look at levels that I'm watching tomorrow. So here on the five minute chart, you guys know what I'm looking for, right? I'm looking for changes in the volume profile. 
that correlate with big moves in stock price. So for example, on this big opening drive, I would want to see big volume on green moves, if I'm a bull, of course, and little, little tiny volume as much as possible on red moves, pullbacks, right? Big volume on pulls away, on pullaways, smaller volume on pull-ins. Big volume, smaller volume. All right now, bears, if this were a downtrend, you'd want to see kind of like vice versa, like always the most volume in your favor as possible. So look here. Contextually, we understand we're going to get bigger volume off the open. We see pretty consistent high volume on the pullaways, falling volume on the pull-ins. Rising volume on the pullaways, volume vo falling volume on the pull-ins. Say that 20 times fast. You, <laughs> rising volume on the pullaways. You know, you see that here it slows down as you pull in. That's really interesting to me. And uh, listen, just understand bears and bulls. Just understand that a lot of bulls are going to be looking at this volume profile and say, that's really interesting. It seems like the market, a bigger sample size of the market agreed with those upside pullaways than they did the pull-ins. Just one factor of many. I think a very interesting thing to track though. Now let's get really contextual and look at the 30 minute chart, taking a look at levels that I'm watching tomorrow, starting getting started here with our self-fulfilling prophecy psychological areas to keep an eye on. So on the 30 minute in particular, of course, I'm always watching only the most popular indicators available, the 200 period and the 50 period. And you can see here that they're already like even the closest one, the 200 period is already 1.4% away. So bulls ideally tomorrow, what you would want to see is just both of these moving averages continuing to curl upside as the stock stays flat or, of course, moves higher. Um, but just to help, like I typically say, get, like get some feet up underneath the short-term move that we got today and just try to, try to get as much short-term psychological um, barrier as possible to the downside to discourage some bears, at least you know on the 30-minute chart here. Bears? And and by the way, bulls, if we end up seeing a downside test of either of these, obviously you're going to want to see a bounce, ideally off the 200 period because it's the, the furthest upside right now. Bears, ideally, you would want to see the stock, not, not only the stock pull in and make a test, but really crack. I mean, bears, you really want to see the stock crack below both of these as we were just before the market opened this morning. Get back below both of those moving averages and ideally... Get back below and have both these curl downside and create psycho a, a downtrending psychological barrier. Okay. Now, moving on to the four hour here, you can see we're in an interesting spot here now on Tesla. We're right between the 200 period and the 50 period, just about a little less than halfway. Bulls, really simple here. Any downside test of that 50 period, going to want to see a hard bounce. Now, granted, it is 2.8% away, but that's nothing for Tesla. We've seen crazier things. So re realistically, both sides of these channel are well within the discussion for a one-day move. Okay, any downside test bulls going to want to see a bounce. Bears, any downside test going to want to see a crack to the downside and a close beneath, ideally. Upside tests, currently we're about 4.3, 4.34% away. Bulls, again, ideally, you're asking for a big move now, 5%. You're getting, you're getting up there in, in terms of average true range. But ideally, a crack upside retest and claim as support. Bears, any upside move, it's already going nearly 5% against you, you know, um, but, you know, 4.3% against you. But realistically, any upside move at all, going to want to see a hard rejection off of that downtrending 200 period here on the four hour. Really simple story here for Tesla on the four hour. Now, the most important chart of all, let's take a look here at the daily. Now, you can see that the nearest moving average is that 50 day. I wouldn't say it's, you know, incredibly likely it's going to be in play. It's about eight and a quarter percent. Again, with the catalyst, we've seen Tesla move, right? But realistically, what's the most obvious? If, like if you showed this chart to anyone with barely a TA education or, or understanding, what would they tell you? That's what I'm paying attention to. The most obvious story on the daily is going to be the most thought about story and likely the most acted upon story. To me, very clear, okay, 200 bucks a share. Now, if we look at the four hour, you can see again, you know, the daily's not gonna show after hours movement, but it's essentially in the same spot, less than a point. So 200 bucks a share, if I'm a bull heading into tomorrow, I would love to see Tesla reclaim 200, which we haven't been able to do for the last five trading days, test it as support, bounce up out of that hole. Bulls, that's the only thing on your mind here on the daily. Bears, 
Similar story, you have one thing on your mind. Reject off of 200 bucks a share as hard as possible. And by the way, for both bulls and bears, doing so with as much volume as possible. You want as much volume as possible on moves that support your bias as we can, as we can get. Now, let's finish up here by taking a look at what was the bias from the options traders here today, right? This is just from today. We had 1.8 million total contracts traded. That's a big sample size. We can get some great data out of that. 1.13 million of those were calls and 691,000 of those were puts. Heavy call side bias here on Tesla today. Now, the short-term speculators, right? The short-term bets, the 0 to 20 delta range. That gives us good short-term information of the sentiment. 367,000 calls, 282,000 puts. So we are seeing a short-term bullish bias as well. And then you look down here, you go basically every, every single delta range until you get to deep in the money, all right, is call side heavy. And then interestingly, once you get to deep in the money, which is typically, by the way, going to be a more longer-term sentiment, those contracts are more expensive, and, uh, you know, that's typically why you see lower volume because people buy less of them. But that also leaves it open for one really big trader to throw off the volume profile. But understand that, you know, that is the only one, the 81 to 100 delta range, that deeper in the money delta range that's leaning to the put side. But still, every other delta range, you know, from all the way from 80 delta down to zero is leaning to the call side. Okay, which, of course, leaves us with this rather heavy call side bias on the overall call per ratio. Hope that helps guys. Listen, if you got value out of this video, please subscribe to the channel. I am covering Tesla stock every single day. If you want to come trade with me every single day, take a look at that first link in the pinned comment. Go ahead and join our, our, our private group and I'll see you in the next one.